Hi, John here at the Historic Game Shop to talk about board games and the times of the Tudors. As with more or less everything else in the 16th century, a lot happened with board games. Some games continued to be as popular as in the medieval period, such as Nine Men's Morris, even getting a mention by Shakespeare in A Midsummer Night's Dream towards the end of the 16th century. Three Men's Morris continues in popularity, but the 12, 5 and 6 Men's Morris variants discussed in the videos of the 11th to 13th century games and the 14th to the 15th century games seem to disappear. Fox and Geese survives and becomes very popular in the 17th century, which I will discuss in my video of the 17th and 18th century games. The game of Nefertafel, originally introduced by the Vikings, is described in the Welsh manuscript by Robert Ab Ifan, dated to 1587, now in the National Museum of Wales, but on the whole the game is now only played in the western fringes of Britain, if at all. Alkirki in the late medieval period evolves into drafts when it gets played on the chequered chessboard rather than the original reticulate board. Many of the rules are similar, with a few important changes, but the board itself changes the nature of play, having two whole rows of empty squares between the two sides rather than a single unoccupied position. The rules only just settled down in the early 17th century, so I am discussing the details of early drafts in the 17th and 18th century games video. The game with no name, which appears in the late 13th century and I discuss in the video on the 14th and 15th century games, has its last appearance on a barrel head found on the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's warship which sunk in Portsmouth Harbour in 1545. Presumably it was played, though without leaving any evidence, into the later Tudor period, but since there is no evidence of the game later than this, it is fair to assume that it is in decline. The hare game seems to disappear, but must be being played somewhere, since it pops up again in the 18th century. Evidence of tables boards from archaeology, as well as from art and manuscripts, suggests various forms with inlaid points as well as painted points. This one, the Mary Rose Tables board, and the reconstruction have inlaid points. Chess undergoes its biggest changes since its introduction into Britain. The movement of both the Queen, the Bishop and the Pawns to the present rules is adopted from Europe sometime after the middle of the century. These rules have been in place in Spain and France since the late 15th century. Very late in the 16th century, the first castle turrets replaced a medieval rook, which has still been based on the form first seen in Europe in the 9th or 10th century. But for much of the Tudor period in Britain, elaborate forms of the earlier medieval chess pieces were being used, such as these. However, by the end of the 16th century, chess is beginning to look a bit like the game we know today. I discuss the history of chess pieces in a separate video and go into more detail there. The Game of the Goose is possibly the first game of its type, a race game for several players. It is a simple game of chance that was probably played for money as well as being played for fun. It is said that it was invented for Francesco de' Medici, who gave it to the less cheerful Philip II of Castile to cheer him up. Philip was soon afterwards to lose his armada, so might have been quite glad of a bit of entertainment. John Wolfe, who described the game as the new and most pleasant game of the goose, registered it in London 1597. Players begin at the entrance to the spiral course, meeting such things as the maze that players get lost in, going back 12 squares, a well the players fall down, missing two turns, or a tavern the player gets drunk in and again misses two turns. The skull and crossed bones close to the final square causes the player to return to the start and begin again. Landing on the geese allowed the player to use their roll of the dice again and go further, doubling their score. The game gave rise to many others with similar construction, though remained popular until supplanted by snakes and ladders, which in its form, known today as a children's game, is very similar to the game of the goose. Now, not board games, but I thought I'd mention a few other games that were around in the Tudor period. Tromadam, Bridgeboard or Nine Holes is a marble game, whereby marbles are rolled along a table from one end to go through holes in a board at the other end. Each hole is numbered and the marbles presumably had to go in a specific order. That order is not recorded, so possibly many different games were known, such as rolling as many marbles as possible without them adding up to more than 31. This borrows from both a dice and a card game known from this period. 
a simpler version of this game where nine small pits are dug into the ground with marbles rolled into them in some order or another can be seen in Bruegel's Children's Games painted in 1560. Also in this painting is the marble game of castles where several castles of three marbles as a base with one on top are made and those playing try to demolish them by rolling marbles at them. This game dates back to Roman times when the castles were made of walnuts. A further game is put and take played with a teetotum which is held by a little girl. This is a four-sided spinning die with the numbers one, two, three and four on the sides. Those playing place a penny in a pot and in turn spin the teetotum. The one means take a penny out of the pot, two means put another penny in, three means do nothing and pass the teetotum to the next player and four allows the player to win the whole pot. The game then begins again. Playing cards were imported from France at the time and showed the court card figures in flamboyant clothes and poses. Most of the different families of card games, such as trick-taking, stops and vying games, were established by this time. On the whole, cards were flimsy and ephemeral. Very few examples from the period survive. I hope that you have enjoyed this short video. These Tudor games, as well as many other games, dice and playing cards can be found on our website.